Welcome, adventurers, to a magical realm filled with enchantment and unexpected twists. Join our protagonist, Sato, as he unlocks the doors to a world teeming with mythical creatures, powerful sorcerers, and the mysteries of a labyrinth beyond imagination. Sato, along with the forgetful yet formidable sorcerer Morlock, the brave warrior Relza, and the human fairy Lafin Pan, faces magical seals, intricate measurements like Mataraka, and a variety of mystical challenges. Throughout this mesmerizing journey, emotions run high as the team faces external threats and internal struggles. Morlock's mysterious past, Laughing Pan's gold coin offerings, and Rails's emotional turmoil contribute to a rich tapestry of character development. This is a tale of courage, camaraderie, and boundless possibilities within the Great Labyrinth. Get ready for a spellbinding journey in the enchanting saga of Sato and his companions in this mystical realm. The series kicks off the protagonist, Sato, attempting to unlock a door in another world. After successfully unlocking the first door, they find another, protected by a magical seal. With Morlock's guidance, they open it together, revealing a mimic inside. As Sato unlocks the mimic's chest, unleashing the creature, Ralza swiftly intervenes, cutting the mimic in half. Curious about Morlock's abilities, Sato learns that Morlock is a level 83 sorcerer, but is forgetful about incantations. Despite his forgetfulness, Morlock once saved the crew by selling their equipment to revive them when they died. During their journey, Morlock experiences back pain and Lafin Pan, the fairy priestess, heals him using her powers. Meanwhile, Sato crafts a bag for Lafin Pan. When Lafin Pan insists on rewarding him, Sato requests a free healing session for Morlock's back. Resting under a tree, Sato learns about the unit of measurement in their world called Mataraka. Morlock explains its origin tied to the kingdom's founder, who had 300 children. In an item shop, Sato discusses measurements and discovers a swindler selling a fake sword. A swindler is unknowingly swindled when Sato reveals it's a valuable mithril silver sword. On their journey, a creature attacks Sato and Morlock forgets his magic incantation. Relza timely intervene and saves Sato against the looming threat. Morlock attempts to use fire magic but forgets a part until Sato reminds him. Sato opens another chest found in the way but ends up triggering a trap, causing him to fall into a water cave and break his ankles. Relza following the waterway rescues him and they return together. Laughing Pan and Morlock are astonished as Sato cooks a creature, which they had killed moments ago. Sato visits a shop for assassin needles. Nivena suggests poison for Railza. Sato cuts Unigi's skin and makes steaks with needles. The crew marvels at the delicious meat. Railza hesitates but enjoys it after trying. On a treasure hunt, Sato avoids a risky chest and mistakenly triggers a metal-dissolving creature, exposing Railza to the risk. Ariel, an elven warrior, and Ninia, a devoted priest, appear. Ariel defeats an elf warrior, sustaining a cheek cut. Ninia licks Ariel's blood strangely. The disappointed king invites heroes and we see the rebels demanding the treasury key. The minister petrifies them with magic and in retaliation disguised demon king takes command. That night, Sato expresses concern about Lafenpan's money obsession to Relza. Relza takes him to witness Lafenpan's gold coin offering. Relza reveals that moonlight fairies like her must offer coins every full moon to avoid shrinking due to a goddess's curse. Touched by the revelation another expedition, Sato seeks Lafenpan's blessing with a gold coin. Meanwhile, opening a chest triggers a teleportation trap for them, sending him and Relza below the labyrinth. Relza struggles against an iron golem inside the labyrinth. Despite her efforts, Sato sacrifices himself to defeat the golem and ends up unconscious. Panicking at Sato's conditio, Relza uses Morlock's life potion, administering it through mouth contact to revive Sato. Sato wakes up with Lafenpan and Morlock by his side. Sato with laugh and pan, eavesdrops on the shop next to Mavina's, surprised to find a marriage consultancy. Morlock walks in seeking a wife, but Railza intervenes. In the labyrinth, they encounter a succubus. The creature charms Sato, but Railza breaks the spell. Sato thinks Morlock is enchanted, but Railza reveals he's joking. They face lightning traps targeting metal armor. Sato strips, and they're hit. Morlock forgot the trap. A powerful magician with a world tree staff effortlessly defeats creatures. A shadow-binding ninja meets a 400-year-old witch. She counters his power, and he returns with demons. Unexpectedly, he kisses the witch instead of attacking. In town, ministers choose hero canes, magician Reiki for her cuteness, and priest Monpoi. In Sato's room, he unlocks a magic book revealing a special mushroom. Morlock claims it's a delicacy, and Railza demands her share. Sato's wire cutter breaks while pulling out dragon whiskers, and he's unable to fix it in the smith. Warlock informs Sato about Don Bane, the reclusive smith with 108 locks. Sato impressively opens them, surprising Don Bane. 
Don Bain fixes the wire cutter and prepares a special meal. Sato catches a cold and he is unable to join the crew in the labyrinth. Rassler urges him to recover. Sato shares his past with Mavina, revealing his tough life in construction. Sega recalls the iron golem, suspecting a motor inside. They return to the labyrinth but find no traces. Sato spots a hidden robot vacuum. The tunnel is then named after Sato for the elusive discoveries inside it. Adventurers flock to the labyrinth after Sato's discovery. The kingdom grants the crew free access for ten years, but Railza demands a share of labyrinth earnings for Sato. Heroes Kanes and Rachi pay respects but assert their main character status. The new commander exits the labyrinth with a silver dragon head arrow, wishing luck and proposing fair fights. At night, the demon came restricted in a new body, discusses retrieving a time-manipulating magician's legacy. The ninja attacks the minister and demon king, causing a two-week recovery. The power magician exits due to his staff's size. A creature releases a sleep-inducing mist on Morlock, impelling Relza to fight alone while others try to wake Morlock. Liliza and Jibble appear at the site, and Liliza ends up taking the treasure. Doubting Sato, she allows him to open the chest, surprising Gibble. Sato and Monpoi, separated from their crews, create barriers with magic. Sato surprises Monpoi with holy water magic. Sato offers food, but Monpoi declines. Their crews reunite during a monster battle, where Errol wants the treasure, but Relza declines her help. Errol defeats Relza, and they share the treasure. Sato chases the vacuum to a world item wreckage site. The ninja attacking Sato traps Relza, but a dwarf magician, Gabungle comes to rescue. Gabungle bows to Morlock, claiming himself as his disciple looking for his master from the past 20 years. However, Morlock doesn't remember him, claiming that he only had female disciples. Gabungle reveals Morlock's true identity as the Great Mage and mentions Morlock's quest for forbidden magic. Before disclosing his full name, a dagger hits Gabungle's jaw, thrown by the returning ninja and his demon friends. In a flashback, the ninja seeks the 400-year-old witch he kissed, discovering her impending death from a curse activated by their love. To cure her, they need the time-manipulating magician's legacy from the labyrinth. Lefampen heals Gabungle, who battles the demons. With Sato's memorized spells, Morlock unleashes Thunderbolt spells, seemingly killing Sato. However, it turns out to be his duplicate. Liliza reveals that Gibble has been tracking Sato with his magic. Before the demon can attack again, Elf Warrior Ariel strikes him, and Monpoi's party appears, creating a protective barrier. The ninja debates, saving the demons, realizing they assist in his quest to save his love. Attempting an eighth-tier magic spell, Primus reveals her black wing. The ninja stops her, fearing the Lord of Darkness, and learns she wants the magician's time-manipulating legacy to save her friend, Ravella. Using telekinesis, Primus summons ninja blades and cuts her wings, summoning dark spirits. A monstrous pillar with multiple eyes emerges, attacking Ariel by cutting off her ear. Ninny uses her power to fix Ariel's ear and the pillar creature, powered by multiple eyes, radiates magic energy, attacking everyone. Morlock, aided by Sato, casts seven Thunderbolt spells, but the creature remains unharmed and laugh and pan, low on energy, warns Morlock she can't block the attack for long. Sato suggests Morlock use the time-stopping magic. Surprise, Morlock learns Sato saw it in the locked book and that Morlock summoned him with that spell. Morlock's past reveals he sought greatness for his daughter's sake, but lost her due to his pursuit. Discovering a time-manipulating magic book in the labyrinth, he journeyed there after his daughter's death. Inside, a special being offers to teach him time travel through a duel. Morlock, with a 90% chance of losing, uses the Thunderbolt formation on the special being. The being defeats Morlock in the duel and erases his memories to fade off the pain of his daughter's loss. In the present, Morlock, still without memories, faces the challenge of using the time manipulation spell to stop the creature. However, he doesn't remember the spell. Morlock is aided by Sao in repeating the incantation. As a result, the time stopa and the countdown begins for the spell to reverse. In the midst of short time, Morlock forgets the plan without Sato's reminder. With 100 seconds left, Morlock faces the challenge of executing a plan he no longer remembers. With 75 seconds left, he sees Sato's handwriting on his palm, guiding him through the spell. Morlock launches the spell just as the countdown reaches zero, bringing everyone back to life. Morlock emerges from the monster's ruins with his hand cut off. Ninia, assisted by Monpoi, reattaches Morlock's hand. The ninja pleads with Ralza to free the other demons, and the dwarf magician reveals Morlock as the time control magician. Meanwhile, the demon reveals his true form as a relative of the demon king. Uncle Dor recognizes the demon as Talifan, his brother's son, leading to an awkward family reunion. Talifan mocks his uncle for his defeats against humans, his boss, and the king. 
Sego advocates for the ninja's forgiveness and Morlock reveals the impossibility of reversing time, only stopping it momentarily. Morlock mentions the being in the labyrinth capable of the ninja's desired magic. Despite the sad requirement of a sacrifice, Kisarugi the ninja agrees for it. The Demon King pleads for Kisarugi's request, and the minister, connected to King Madaraka, agrees with the dwarf magician understanding the connection. The minister nearly announces the king as his ally, but no one catches it. The Black Fairy and La Fanpin send the demons home. Kisaruji, before leaving, acknowledges Sato as the team's heart and hints at his potential victory if present. Sato, accompanied by the group, gathers useful items as more adventurers enter the labyrinth. The dwarf magician questions Morlock about his memory, briefly recalling a pet dog but not much else, leaving suspicions about the authenticity of his memory loss. In another scene, the king meets Kisarugi in a room filled with magical energy. Kisarugi sees the witch from the magical room as the king talks about restoring her youth with the spirit returner, the blood sword. The king strikes Kisarugi, awakening the witch. The next day, the rejuvenated witch encounters Kisarugi, who has lost an arm and a leg. Due to memory loss, she mistakes him for someone else. When two thieves attack her, Kisarugi fends them off. The two thieves turn out to be demons, aiding Kisarugi to make his place in Ravella's heart. As adventurers bid farewell outside the labyrinth, Relza confronts Morlock about whether he brought Sato to this world. Back at the inn, Morlock expresses regret for involving Sato in this world, but Sato expresses gratitude as being transported here saved him from a fatal accident in his original world. Lafenpan suggests returning Sato to his world, but Relza reacts emotionally, smashing a table and storming out. Sato follows her to a cliff. Relza asks Sato if he wants to return to his world. Sato, while unsure of his ability to return, expresses happiness in this world where he feels useful. Relza is suddenly attacked by a monster. Surprisingly, she handles it with strength and tells Sato that she needs him more than anyone in his world. On their arrival at the site, Relza inquires if Morlock can send Sato back to his world, and Morlock explains it's possible, but Sato would return to the moment he was about to be hit by a truck, risking his survival. The scene then shifts to a dog working for aristocrats, hunting beasts. After an adventure, the team learns that Morlock has died and a wild dog ate part of him. Sato suggests venom from a dark spirit caused Morlock's death. Splitting up in teams to plan his recovery if possible, Lafenpan gets tools while Railza and Sato go to the inn. A flashback reveals the dog's past, saving the Lady Wolf, falling in love with her but eventually losing her to a monster. In the present, an undead attacks Railza and Sato, whom they mistake as Sato. They believe Morlock's body has forgotten his family. However, the true Morlock skeleton strikes the undead from behind. Laugh and Pan reveals that Morlock resurrected through a contract, though he is unaware of it. The incomplete resurrection begins causing erratic transformations, altering his aura between undead and alive. Gatmungle claims the dog's consumption doesn't matter. If magical energy remains, revival is possible. Realizing a binding magic, the team splits to find the dog. Detecting Morlock's energy fails due to its strength. Meeting an elf warrior, they learn of a death bounty on the dog. Meanwhile, the dog recalls eating Morlock's part, it turns out that the once sane dog has now turned into a feral. Morlock talks about Relza to Sato, inquiring his feelings. The dog, recognizing Morlock from a distance, vows to avenge him. Morlock advises Sato on Relza's feelings and Sato agrees, but the dog suddenly attacks, severing Morlock's arm. Laugh and Pan and others search for Sato and Morlock after they fail to appear at the meeting point, discovering that Sato and Morlock are injured. The dog attacks Sato, prompting Relza to confront the dog for Morlock's magic. The dog cleverly uses fire breath, burning Relza's arm. As she is about to deliver the final blow, the dog's pup intervenes, pleading for mercy. Suddenly, Relza is interrupted by a greater demon emerging from the ground. Stato attempts to stop it with a rope, but the demon reveals its intention to avenge its brother. Seizing the distraction by Laughing Pan, Relza pierces the demon only to face another demon, its master. The master demon unleashes scorching heat, overpowering Laffenpan, who collapses under the strain of his potent magic. Relza tells Sato to take Laffenpan to town, not out of holding her back, but to protect him. Spotting Morlock, Sato contemplates how to help. The demon prepares to end Relza, but Sato intervenes with holy water, using pliers to sever the demon's tethers. Sato identifies Morlock's ice spell and pushes Relza away, getting encased in ice instead. Morlock, lying beside the dog and pup, reconnects with dead dog, understanding the dog's request to save his pup. Suddenly, the top of the demon's head falls away mysteriously. Recognizing the wind-killing sword, they see Morlock fully reincarnated. Morlock's fiery swords prevail, banishing the demon. 
A sudden gust snatches Morlock's hat, revealing dog ears on his head. In the demon realm, two siblings engage in a life-or-death battle for their mother's favor. One kills the other, but the surviving sibling slays the mother. They merge into a unified demon to endure. In the present, Ralza demands an explanation for Morlock for his sudden alteration. Elsewhere, Jabungle battles undead, saved by Ninja's arrival. Ninja's exorcism spell obliterates the remaining undead. Morlock explains the dog restored his power, aiming to save his pup by breaking a curse. Suddenly, an ice shard pierces Morlock, propelling him far away. The supposedly defeated demon and Morlock rise once more. Morlock summons a colossal golem, recognized by Laughampen from a past encounter. When the demon attacks, Morlock counters the demon with a punch using the golem's arm. Underestimating Morlock's combination, the demon faces the golem's relentless assault. Morlock initiates a protective barrier, and the demon warns of an impending explosion affecting Morlock's allies. However, Morlock designed the barrier to shield his comrades. Morlock concludes his incantation, summoning a massive meteor that crashes into the demon. Morlock reassures his friends, explaining the barrier's protection from the blast force. Morlock realizes the demon is regenerating and decides continuous attacks are the only option. Despite their initial belief in Morlock's invincibility, Sato, known for his quick thinking, severs the demon's arm with Raza's great sword. Warlock credits Sato's intervention and humbly acknowledges his own limitations. Ralza rushes towards Sato, about to kiss him, when the demon's last remnant starts chanting a spell. The white puppy bites the demon, draining its magical energy. Morlock, embracing the puppy, announces his intent to restore Father Dog using the energy. Morlock asserts his position as the top magician, vowing to save a single dog, emphasizing the bond between a parent and their offspring. A radiant light envelops the dog, and after the magical process, Morlock collapses beside it. The dog opens its eyes and glances back at its puppy and promises to repay its debt. Relza expresses happiness for the dog, urging it to live well. Sega wakes in the inn with Relza by his side. Later, we see Relza and Seda find themselves atop the Great Labyrinth, observing the crater caused by Morlock. They discuss Sato's changed clothing and improvise a makeshift hot tub. Later, they share events, including the mysterious cup. Morlock interrupts, confessing his gambling loss and using the cup for cover. The cup's effects shock everyone. Sega repairs footwear, gaining fame as the handyman. Morlock suggests starting a store and Relza offers help in the establishment process. Settled in this new world, Sato now finds fulfillment in his new life, surpassing anything in his old one. This marks the end of our story. And that concludes our magical journey with Sato and his companions. Thank you for joining us through the twists of the labyrinth, the battles, and the unexpected friendships. If you enjoyed the enchanting journey with Sato and his companions, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more magical tales and adventures. Your support means the world to us, and it ensures that you won't miss out on the next captivating story.